Hey guys, this is KSFX back once again, and this time I'm here with a game called Anno 2070. Uh, I really enjoy this game, so I thought I would go ahead and do a couple of things. One, I'm going to do a quick review right now, then I'm going to do an abridged getting started guide. Most There's a lot of getting started guides out, of there, out there for this game because it is a bit confusing and overwhelming until you get used to it. But uh, they're all usually like four hours long. So I've decided to make a really abridged one where I'm just going to try to go as fast as possible. Try not to spend more than like two minutes on each point. So I gave myself a little extra time for this beginning just to uh, tell you about the game. So this is kind of a combination of SimCity and Civilization, maybe a few other games. But it's a resource management game about kind of like the future. The world got flooded and now everything is underwater and you have to go populate islands that were previously mountaintops is kind of their, uh, their whole theme. Locating island. So, this game uh, is really super fun and really super time consuming, like, uh, basically just like SimCity was. So when you start out, you get your arc here. Your arc just kind of lives wherever. It, uh, it pops out somewhere randomly on the map near one of the bigger islands. And you get one little command ship, which you can rebuild if it gets destroyed by just paying money, so you don't need to build the shipyard. But I'll get to all that in a minute. So you see it... When I got close to this island, it just revealed the whole island. Um, but we're going to go ahead and get started with the guide before I actually start settling islands. <clears throat> so, uh, first thing you do is you need to find an island. Um, I don't recommend starting on the very first island. This is going to be set on like super easy mode. I'm making kind of a multiplayer farm map. Uh, multiplayer tends to destroy all the contents of your arc and replace it with whatever your last multiplayer game was. So if you're going to host or you have, uh, you know, special arc plugins for whatever, you need to have a farm to rebuild and regather all of those plugins uh, using, you know, save games and stuff like that to get your information back after it's lost when you join a multiplayer game. So, first things first, we're losing 30 bucks up here because we have no income at all. That is paying for this ship, and that is it. So because of that, we're already in the red. We're losing money every second. Uh, we have a lot of it, though, so I wouldn't really worry about that. So first things first, I'm going to scout out all the islands surrounding this area. So that's going to be my first job. I want to find an island and a veggie island. So that's what I'm looking for right now. A main island, which you can tell because they have the resource of tea, rice, and coffee. And then I'm going to find a veggie island. So I'm just going to start looking around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here and come back when I found my islands and decide what to do. Okay guys, so I have mapped out a number of islands around the area here and taking a look at them, we've got another main island over here, another main island over here, and another main island over here. So I have three, or I have four starting points here that look pretty good. Um, but I did find this, which is a vegetable island, which is going to be my primary vegetable island, that already has a former on it, uh, randomly generated, that gives it plus 250 eco. Now this is perfect because that's about, that's that's way over the limit of how much I'm actually going to use. Uh, the maximum eco is 5,000. It also has a dam, so this is like a best case island you could ever want. It's got water, it's got a dam for free power, it's got a former, which I think is the biggest uh, eco boost in the entire game. So this is a jackpot right here, so we're going to look only at the two closest islands to that. Proximity really doesn't matter, but we're going to need so many vegetables that uh, I think I'm going to let it matter this time. So, uh, we've got, let's see, this island is nice, wide open, but I don't see a place for a dam on it. Dams are really nice on populated islands because the people get all complainy about certain types of power structures. This one has a dam, I like it, um, but I don't like the open space. It doesn't look big enough for a monument. Uh, there might be just enough room for a monument here with a huge chunk of it cut out, or maybe here. So maybe this will be my Tycoon Island. Um, the starting one is not very good at all, that's why I skipped it. Uh, there's not enough room anywhere for a monument. <clears throat> so what I'll probably do is turn this into an island for my text. So, uh, let's get into that later. I have decided on this island. This island is huge, has tons of open space, can definitely fit an entire monument here, and even sneak a city down here, and a city up here, which is the point. My starting island, that is what I always do. I look for two cities and a monument's worth of open space. The other thing you need to do is find a coastline that is relatively straight. So I'm going to start right here. And uh, this will provide me with space for fisheries, and I'm going to move my arc closer. 
So first things first, I'm going to get started on this game. I dropped off all the goods by settling on this island, so I'm going to build a little city. Alrighty, I've got my city started here. I went ahead and placed the city center as close to the coast as I felt comfortable building to. And uh, went ahead and built some block production here. So I've got three block production, that's usually what I like to start with. One power plant, two fisheries. Now you'll notice I've already done something critical. I may be out of tools and I won't be able to build more. This is because I really don't bother with that. Uh, early game, some people like to build up. I like to get in the green as soon as possible. So I will spend my lump sum to get out of the red. So what I'm going to do next is uh, build as many houses as I can. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to find my allies. And I have ordered uh, blocks from my ark as well. So let me explain what I'm doing here with my city. And then I will go ahead and look for allies. You can see this is Yana up here. Ordered goods are ready for collection. So my little boat's going to go ahead and get those. What I do for a city, and I'll go ahead and show the whole thing, you'll be able to see the entire city setup, but this is a very effective setup. I maximize the number of dwellings within the house area while getting all of them to uh, executive level. So, uh, first thing I do is you take one edge of the longer one and you extend the roads out like a T. It's going to be a very common theme, so uh, look for that. Then I just build rows of two in each direction, kind of like wings coming down first, because then I only need one uh, of the concert centers right here. Oops, see, not what I meant to do. Okay. Uh, one of the concert centers right here will then get everybody in the starter area. It kind of saves you some money early game. Honestly, also, when you build, without you, make sure that never you turn off this far. ascension rights and turn up your taxes. There's no reason not to have it in light green until you're ready to upgrade. Alrighty, so next thing I'm going to do is go find my allies and make more houses. My goal is to get all of these houses full. So that's going to be what I'll do next. See you in a minute. Okay guys, I'm back. I have built my entire city here. So it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to do this so that you can see it pretty well. There are There's the T right in the middle. So we have the wings coming down, the wings coming up of houses. We have six houses left over here, one block away from being even with those houses. That leaves exactly the amount of room for an education center right here. And uh, then you got two of these right here. Now I know there's a quite a bit of overlap with the concert centers, but there's almost no overlap with the, uh, or there is overlap, but there is almost no overlap at the ends of the education center. And as a result, when you put uh, your and the, uh, you can also see I put roads around the entire outside. That's very important. So this is all kind of interconnected. This middle road connects all the way to the ends, and the outside roads connect all the way around. The reason for this is very simple. When I'm ready to go to the next level, I'm actually going to destroy all of these, and then pick a road, probably this one, and get rid of it. So now we've broken the connection here, and this leaves exactly the right amount of room for a senate. So this will allow us to get executives. As you can see, nobody is fretting about that lost road. It has been uh, compensated for by the pattern that's already out here. And I feel like this is the way that you can get the most out of your houses. Now I have done this pretty quickly. I searched out, found Thorn over here, found uh, him, and I even bought a few from this guy just so that it's, I think it's a little cheaper in the long run, uh, even though he overcharges you for everything. It's a little Do cheaper in the long run than paying him. So, so you can see they always have lots either. of blocks and lots of tools. I just value. bought out Thorn. And uh, my boat is just full of extra tools now. This is an adventure, so but we're I meeting think all we're the needs. I've expanded a lot, and you can see my fish and tea have not expanded with me as much. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and when we come back, I will upgrade my citizens to the next uh, level. Alrighty guys, my good storage has filled back up. I added about three or four fisheries. That's probably too many, but I just felt like it. I added another depot, just so that this area over here would have some help. Uh, this one will also be collected once I connect a road to it or get a flying unit. So, uh, before I do any of that, I have also gotten ready to expand. Here's where my tool production is going to be over here. So I went ahead and made sure I had three mines, whether you can do that with one. Like, I got really lucky. This uh, island also is the best for mines. There's eight mines on it, so that's going to be great. Uh, so you try to set that up. 
And I got more tea. Tea actually produces a lot. This kind of civilization probably only needs one more, even when I fully upgrade. And uh, I moved these two over just a little bit, just a hair, so that I could go ahead and put a road through it. And that's kind of an important point I wanted to bring up. Uh, the biggest number one point is that even on the hardest difficulty, and I have beaten the hardest map power games on this, Warning. you need to be able down. to be confident enough to just destroy things that aren't working out for you. And to evolve your islands by destroying things that are working out and moving them to different islands in order to better utilize the entire map. Okay? So, uh, one th for instance, this right here, I don't feel like it's doing a good job. So we're going to go ahead and move that right here so that I can get a pass through with this road. This allows me to harvest this area a little more effectively. So that's what I'm going to do. Because these two are full and I'm not full up on blocks. So that's how you can tell. But the big thing is going to be once I uh, go ahead and start upgrading everything. So let's go ahead and take our citizens down to the lowest tax bracket. Remember we turned off Ascension so they're not going to do it on their own. And once uh, all their needs are met, which you can see their drink is filling Gotta back up. Gotta be moving on! See you around. Trench coat is out of here. So it's only been... Uh, trench coat showed up like right away. So it's only been about 50 minutes into the game. And I've been fast forwarding through most of those. So it's only been about 30 minutes. And uh, I have 93,000. I started with 80. So my rush to green has actually helped me... Uh, getting in the green and in income has actually helped me to get back up above what I started with. So that's why I kind of rush it. Uh, a lot of people like to just let it build, which is fine. But uh, I rush the civilization as fast as I can to tier 3. Uh, the reason is I just don't feel like you can make a good profit below tier 3. So, we'll get to that later. Right now, my citizens what are about to What should I say? I'm upgraded. doing great! It looks like I do need more tea in order to upgrade them, unfortunately. So let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, let's see. Put this... That'll work. So the most important part is planning ahead. I just don't like to have a little grass sitting around my production areas. So, doing that, we now have, or we should have enough tea for these guys to uh, upgrade. So I'm going to come back when they're all ready to upgrade. Okay, now that my citizens have decided it's time to upgrade, I'm just going to upgrade one of them. We've made the best and of then the change them back Thanks to, to, you. to uh, their regular tax rate of being a little higher. This will cause them all to stop upgrading. Don't forget to grab the new guys. Where are they? I thought I saw them. Oh, they're over here. And change them to light green as well. There's no reason to waste taxes, so that's just kind of a little upkeep thing you need to do. Now that I have them, I can go ahead and build tools, and I can build wood. So that's the next thing I'm going to do, is build wood and tools. And uh, I will come back with those. Also, it looks like my uh, tycoons have gotten more stuff. I didn't notice this. I guess now they let you do both. Before you had to get to executive level before you could do both. I'm going to stick with Ecos because that's I thought who I picked on this map. Um, I couldn't remember. I think I actually did random. So uh, it looks like it gave me both, but I'm going to go ahead and play it as in the old style. It looks like they made a lot of changes with the update. I kind of like being able to see uh, the resources there. You can see the raw materials. It used to just tell you your fertility is eco balance and energy. So there's a lot more info on all the islands. Uh, I think the game runs a little smoother, quite honestly. It, you can see it's kind of laggy. It's always kind of laggy. You push a button. Well, I guess you guys can't see that I'm pushing a button. But let's say I click. See, it kind of has like a half second delay. It always had that. And I actually think it's gotten better. So I'm going to upgrade all three of these because they're all going to be collecting goods soon. Uh, the warehouse is kind of overwhelmed at the moment. Uh, so... I need I needed to put another depot down here just to collect all of this tea. So that will continue. Alrighty, I will be back once all of my uh, citizens out here have uh, gotten caught up and that I have tool production started. That's an important point because then you no longer need to buy tools. Wood is the easiest resource to get and I will show you a little wood configuration you can do that is super awesome that makes sure that you get the most out of that too. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, I have finished with my tool production here. So I have decided to create two iron mines, so that's why I have double tool production here. So one copper and uh, 
The thing about coal is it's actually putting out double, so I decided to right off the bat get two iron, two smelters, and two tool factories per smelter, which is the ratio for those. So I have a pretty big tool production factory going on over here. I should be able to upgrade all day long, along with the extras in my boat. And I haven't visited Yana or uh, Thorn in quite a while, so I could get a ton more. So this is a good uh, configuration for your tree area. When you put down, you only need a single nursery. Just make sure that you get it really close. Let me show you here what I did on this side. Um, I don't actually put it way out here. I actually put it in until it lines up like that. So you have one more space you can go on either side. And you can see that lines up perfectly, and that's how I have this road al along the outside. So just make sure the whole configuration is one space away from your depot. When you place this, that's how you determine that. So just barely reaches it, and then you can build a road all the way around it. Put, saw put uh, three sawmills on the corners. You do not need a fourth one. Uh, it's almost impossible to use that much wood. It actually could do fine with two. I just like to have an overabundance of, oop, I missed my map here. I just like to have an overabundance of production. So that's why I have so many tool factories, mostly because I'm going to destroy one later to make uh, steel or uh, ammunition, depending on what I'm going to do. And an overabundance of block production. So a combination of the two, buying goods and building too much. Alright, so next thing we're going to do is upgrade our citizens yet again. Now this is important. Uh, this is what I learned from playing power games, which is a lot harder than a normal map. Uh, when you're upgrading, you get these little uh, new things that your people will need. And it's very tempting just to update, upgrade everybody to the max. So like, oh, I only need 750 of the tier 2s. So let's just make like a thousand of them. Actually, not a good idea. Um, the way to get the most money out of the game, because what happens is as soon as they're able to get health foods, they're going to start getting unhappy when they don't have it. So they're happy as little clams when you have 300 and, you know, what is it, uh, 45 of them. But when you have 360, ding, suddenly they want something new, and they're just going to be angry about not having it. And you're actually going to lose tax money before you can build the production buildings, which runs the risk of, on harder missions like the stock market crash, you can actually run out of resources if you uh, continue to upgrade people. So my thing is, always get as many of the little houses as you can. They're pretty cheap always get these guys exactly to 750 so they get the education bonus and then do the same thing with the next tier get them only I think it's uh, 1200 just to the Senate and never build a single a single other house if you build more than that you're gonna bump them up to executives to get rid of that number so that's the plan there so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get up to 360 build some sushi and then we're gonna build uh, the communicators once we have satisfied all the sushi needs I'm actually going to skip all that and get to where I'm at communicators. I'm just telling you guys what to do so that you will know. So when you see me next, I will have education networks. That is the plan. So I'm going to go ahead and start upgrading now, and I'll see you guys then. Bye. Alrighty, guys. We are back. I have created just over 750. So I have 765 employees. That is in preparation for upgrading them. I have met all of their needs here, and I'll show you how I did that real quick. I needed power, so I started expanding to wherever I saw a mine, or over here I needed a nuke, or a, uh, not a nuke plant, but a electro hydroelectric dam, the other big energy producer in this game. So I knew I would need to expand this way, so I did that. Uh, essentially, I depot hopped, which is essentially you put a depot in between where you want to be, and then you destroy that depot to get a depot out in the middle of nowhere out here. That was just to get some power. But while I was doing that, I was considering the resources that I need. So this mine down here is gathering copper. This mine up here is gathering copper. And while it was over there, I said, hey, why not? I'll put a couple of rice farms down. And uh, the sand is right here. Next to the sand, I put a couple of microchip factories and a couple of comms producing factories. Uh, checking here, I can see that, huh, kind of expected the sand to far outweigh the copper. Maybe it's a 2 to 3 ratio, but it is not 1 to 1 copper to sand at all. So what I can do is get Registering a second energy shortage. sand over here, but then my power goes out. So we're going to actually cancel that. I'm not going to do that yet. I'm not worried about building up extra copper for now. But uh, paying attention to the ratios is decently important, so just keep that in mind. Just so that you don't waste too much money. Each of these costs money, so having an extra mine here is costing me 15 
but uh, I am utilizing most of it because more of this sand is being used for two factories. So anyway, I got the sushi factories over here also pumping away. So you can see my sushi is filling up fast, my comms are filling up okay, I believe they're in the positive direction. Same with my tea and my fish, and I actually like to do it that way. I try to get a, a positive trend on everything, positive trend on economy, positive trend on goods incoming. And eventually, yes, everything will max out and you'll start backing up your production line, but that's okay. I could also afford to build a shipyard, so I didn't, and I have made my first trade route. So when you make a trade route, really important to name it something that you'll remember. So right now this is main, maybe later this will be eco, so veggie to ecos, because I'll have a different island for tax and a different island for tycoons. But right now I'm just calling it veggie to main, just so I remember what it is. And it's just transporting veggies from this island to this island. So let's go up to that island. So I have a new island up here. This is the great 250 eco island up here that is going to greatly improve the output of all my veggies, which is why I probably don't need the normal ratio of 4 to, uh, four to 2 for rice. So 1 to 2. Yeah, because I'm getting like 1.5 veggie farms out of all of these. I could destroy one of these if I felt like it, but I'm just going to let the veggies pile up and I'll build more rice if I ever run out. That's how I like to play. I watch the, uh, I watch the, the, um, income. So you just basically look here and say, hey, I got a surplus of fish, I got a surplus of tea. Come back later, check, still have a surplus. All right, everything's going in a positive direction. Always check a little while after you upgrade everything. So, all right, let's start adding education center. energy shortage. Ah, I knew that was coming. So, uh, ecos have energy issues. So let's look up here. We got two more mines that I'm eventually going to expand to, so let's go ahead and depot hop to them. So I like to put the mine, I like to put them right next to the mines. Uh, we'll do that. And, oh, one more, so I'll just depot hop over to it. Okay, now this is, e this is on easy mode, so you get everything back. This is going to be my farm map, no reason to put it on hard. But even on a uh, power game, super hard, I would do that. Because the cost of these is five, which means the entire cost of everything that it took to waste all those resources will be outweighed very soon. Not, you know, at the moment it seems like a bad deal because I just deleted a whole bunch of stuff that I could have used. But in the long run, I just saved money by um, deleting them right off the bat. So we're going to place two of these because I know I'm going to need more power. Okay, uh, something important to consider. This is something I used to, uh, oh, let me show you now. So now I have good coverage with education centers. They go all the way back to these guys, which are also in range of this. So you can see they're actually in range over here. So even these guys, way the heck out, well, it's ending with this guy. But this guy way the heck out here is gonna get to be level level uh, eco, or eco executive. So he's gonna get to be max level. So as you can see, it goes almost all the way to the edge in every direction, costs two education centers, which is usually what you need to do anyway, two, uh, two of these, because you usually need to do those anyway as well. So I just really like this configuration and it allows you to safely destroy this area to put a senate in here and that reaches almost all the way over here. Things just keep getting better in this so city this, and it's all last thanks row, to you. This last row or last two rows will end up being stuck at level three but everybody over here can become an executive and with a second city to give you some of the lower tier because you need to keep 80 percent one tier under whatever you're upgrading to with the second uh, with the second tier up there you can go ahead and um, build a tiny city over here that you don't even need a senate with and you'll be able to build the monument which means you'll be able to bypass a second senate. Saves you a lot of operating costs so I like doing that. Okay so now we're ready to go up to engineers. So I got my trade route all set up, I got my goods incoming, everything's being produced on this one island and now is Registering the new important population part. Class. So I have upgraded to my new engineers. Queen is on TV. So he I'm says our commitment will allow our grandchildren to live a you. better life. I First, believe make sure him. Turn all the taxes up. Okay, so now I have new stuff. Now this is very important at this point in the game. A um, couple things. One, you get these roads, so make sure that you use these roads. These roads, uh, I like the eco ones because you can see them. Uh, it's very hard to see the tycoon ones because they look exactly like the regular roads. And you have to really squint your eyes and zoom in really far to see whether you built a regular road, which is cheap, but as you can see, these goods move kind of slow on it. Versus the fast roads, 
which watch this. You are full of surprises. Also, Yana loves you when you do that. The speed increase for all your trucks is really immense. It increases every, even the tractors, the ones that are just from the, uh, the guys themselves. So watch this. I put all that down. Yes, it's expensive, but now all of my uh, production, I might as well just have extra trucks um, because of how fast everything's moving. I don't need that little bit of road there. Yeah, keep it. Also, uh, just a funny thing for me, if you ever have two of them next to each other, not a complete waste. They uh, they know it's expensive, so they give you a little cool little uh, free beautification things in there, should you feel like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade my entire area out here with these roads. Just because I like the way it looks. But uh, that's not why we're pausing here. We're pausing here because I'm about to move on to... Uh, yes, roads. Roads everywhere. So anyway, I'm going to continue upgrading all that stuff later. Uh, this is a important part of the game. Communication systems. Now, Actually, she should be saying it any second. Maybe I need a certain number of the uh, the engineers to move in. So Loading we'll give them a second. There it is. Relevant information. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. What can I do so for now you? we At can go service. ahead and uh, buy the text. My Access rights to construction oh. menu. So now we have the text. So let me go ahead. Trimaran ready. Yep, Trimaran, everything is all set. I didn't do this earlier, so I'm going to do it now. We'll put the tycoons there. And uh, I don't think I can, oh, I can build a tech house, good. So I'll drop the tech house right there. So now my menu has all three houses, the fast road, and the road that I'm still going to use for all my cities. Okay, so with that, um, we're going to take a little break from leveling up because this I'm just is very watching important, this guys. show about the river water treatment I wish plants. Stop talking for a minute. I'd like to I'm design talking. one of those myself. Okay? Um, the... Uh, these guys actually cost more to maintain at 100% satisfaction than they give you in taxes. So it's important not to satisfy their needs, ironically. Um, always satisfy all the needs of your level 1, level 2, and executives. But if you're going to satisfy the needs of your uh, engineers, you need to have a surplus of wealth to begin with because they're actually going to cut you into the red as you build their buildings. Their buildings are too expensive and the satisfaction they get, they do not pay an increased amount of taxes that support that. Therefore, you will lose money. So harder missions, keep that in mind. Do not try to build up to uh, happy tier three guys, engineers, until you are absolutely ready to do so. So next steps, uh, I'm going to build a little tech civilization. I'm gonna put it over here. This is my uh, monument area, but I'm only going to temporarily put the techs here. They're going to be deleted and moved to another island later. So we're going to start with that. So I'm going to put the text down over here, build little tech uh, everything up to, um, let's say, Your oil. Trimaran I'm going ready. to buy me a uh, trimaran. These things are awesome. You can't really get a trimaran any other way except uh, buying from these guys because you don't have the technology and you need to have underwater islands to have the technology to build them. So she always, just like the command ship, she sells you a new one every time it's destroyed. I like to now switch these out. Now this is one and this is two. Uh, this boat actually becomes a firefighting boat for my oil rigs and this becomes my main workhorse. These are faster, they carry tons more resources and they can go underwater. So the next step is to start mapping out the underwater. So as we go down here, now you can do this the easy way, which is what I'm going to do, or you can do it the hard way. The hard way is recommended uh, when you're dealing with either difficult maps or you just need to uh, quickly settle islands. As you can see, I'm looking around underwater right now. If you watch my mini-map instead of the map itself, you'll see that, oh, there's that guy. You'll see that you can see out of the corner of your eye when it gets bright. See bright, dark, bright, dark. So you can actually find all the underwater islands and all of the abandoned research facilities underwater, there's another underwater island, by roaming around quickly and when you see light, return to where you saw the light. So this is an island, looks like it might, I'm gonna stop clicking for a minute so I get more control. This might have an abandoned research facility on it, doesn't look like it, but this is a great candidate for that, so keep an eye out for these islands that cannot be populated, they usually have an abandoned research thing on them. Um, you can't see the fertilities but you now know exactly where to send your trimaran. And when I was doing power games, I actually uh, did this first 
as soon as I could get the trimaran, I went around underwater. Found every single island, put on a white flag because I was under attack by a bunch of people at the time, and used the 10 minute white flag to run around and map all of the islands to get their fertility so I could start planning my future. So, uh, that is the hard way, because you see how time consuming that is. The easy way is to just start putting waypoints and comb the entire map underwater. Which is what I am going to do. So my trimaran is off the grid for quite a while. It's going to be mapping these until the end of time. But, uh, <laughs> eventually I will have an idea where every island is on the map. And that is good enough for me. So it won't miss the big ones, it may miss a few, it'll probably miss some of the researches as well. Uh, a little tip, I don't know if it has to do with the random number generator or what, but look underneath Yana and Thorn. Sometimes they just hide them right underneath. But uh, looks like they didn't this game. Or did they? This is just a, that's just a regular island. Okay. Alright, so I'll let my little trimaran do its thing. I am looking for a good island to get my techs their food. New island coordinates acquired. Excellent. So I'm looking for a big open island. Uh, with a algae fertility. This is a big open island. It'll be great for diamonds. But there's no algae. So this is definitely going to be my diamond island. Has a black smoker. So we're going to rush to Academy. New island and try to turn this acquired. into gold. We're also going to turn one into uranium. That should give you infinite gold and infinite uranium, which will satisfy all your highest level needs in this game. Uh, the maximum power source and the uh, the eco exec or the tycoon executives require tons of gold. And if you don't want to deal with gold drills, you can just uh, find an island like that and get it from the underwater island because it's infinite. Alrighty, I've spent too long on this section already, so I don't think there's really any. Oh, there we go. Wait, 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 uh, you know, we'll come back for that. We shall come back for that. I'll just leave that up there as a reminder. So I did find one. Cool. So yeah, you do find a lot of stuff combing like that. So next steps, I am not going to upgrade my, uh, any further, my engineers up here. I'm going to actually take a break and do the text. The most important part about this Locating break is island. this is the time that you go crazy with military. You now have access to your highest tier stuff. So if this were actually a difficult military mission, we would go ahead and destroy one of these tool factories, which I'm going to do right now, and build in its place munitions. Okay, so the island coordinates acquired. Excellent. So you can see it's working. We haven't done anything. We sent this boat out a long time ago and we've already found three islands. That is the power of combing. Uh, so, okay. Do, do, do. I've forgotten what I was doing. Bullets, yes. So, now is the time when you build a mass of hovercrafts or a mass of cruisers or anything like that. So, this is the time to do it when you're at tier 3, but where you're still at tier 2, because this is the most money you're going to get. The best income is just before you start gearing out tier 3s, which you can actually, ways of living. Uh, as, as we discussed before, of that. I can get to pasta, which is 250, before they start to need it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to get just under 250. So we're going to head, go ahead and let them get up there. And so that's basically what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to get them to just under 250 while I talk about, uh, this is the best time to expand militarily, to start taking islands, to drop everything off on, uh, on, you know, your new islands, set up trade routes, all that stuff. This is the time, if you're fighting people, like if you have, uh, Thor on the map with you, if he's sharing the map, or Kato is about to show up about this time, this is when you build a fleet, or Hector. If you, uh, Hector can be beneficial, but if you decide, no, Hector, it's time to go, then you take him out now at Tier 3, the beginning of Tier 3. That is when you are best equipped to fight the Long War. You only need one boat to get to one island, which you can even do with, you know, military ships or your command ship if you have to. So this is the only trade route you require, so your civilization is really strong in that effect. You could get vegetable seeds and transplant these four onto your main island, which means you're extremely secure because you have no trade routes and no, uh, you know, boats for little rogue enemies to go find and pick off, which is great. Um, 
and you're basically pretty much set. You're all you have ever, all your needs met, and you have a ton of income, ton of money, ton of everything. So now would be the time if you wanted to break out militarily. So that's my uh, my little military speech. Plus, uh, the techs are your next focus is getting them to researchers before you move on and try to get your Man engineers any higher and level. Harmony. And so uh, they're going to allow you to build airports, which lets you build some of the stronger units in the game. So you're going to have one underwater island, whichever one. So you end up picking one. Here, this might be a nice one. Um, I don't like how far away it is from my civilization, but I do like the open space and I do like the algae fertility. So this might be it. I'm thinking this might be my underwater island, but we'll let the trimaran do its business for, uh, I don't know, like an hour or something. Probably fast forward going to be like 20 minutes. So, uh, while I'm doing other stuff, I will fast forward, look for that, and get my researchers. I think I'm going to put coffee on this island. Um, I will delete those coffee seeds later. But it's not hurting anything to be here now before I actually find a real coffee island, which will probably be, I think I decided, was this tech island? I think I did. Maybe, maybe this one was. One of these was this one. Yeah, this one was going to be my tech island, so we're going to definitely put uh, sugar beets out here. So I have coffee and sugar and I can go ahead and build them their energy drinks on their own island. I found that to be pretty successful in my past games. So that's what I'm going to do. Island located. For now, everything's going to be on one island, just my main island, just for simplicity. And once I hit uh, Tex to maximum, so that I have underwater islands, underwater oil, all that stuff, that is when I'm going to start offshoring some of this stuff. And there's my second of three sunken uh, research facilities, so hooray! Um, there's usually only three or four on the map, so I'm assuming there's three. Okay, so then I, oh, and then I'm gonna build a dam. So once I have a dam, uh, a lot of money, so I'm gonna build a second city. So here's my first city, gonna be the second one is gonna be over here in the corner, as close to this and this as I can get the shoreline and the uh, the little sand slot down here. As close to those as I can get, so I leave maximum amount of Locating room over here island. for my monument, which I think I can fit. I don't mind overlapping this a little bit, because as you saw, these last line of houses are doomed to be level 1s forever. Well, now these last lines of houses will be doomed to be level 1s forever, and these guys get to be executives, because they'll be close enough to the monument. So that is the plan. I will come back once I've done all of that, and uh, we'll continue this.